give a time to her, I would tell my 21 year old self that personal happiness lies in knowing that life is not a checklist of acquisition or achievement. Your qualifications, your CV, are not your life, though you will meet many people of my age and older who confuse the two. Life is difficult and complicated and beyond anyone's total control, and the humility to know that will enable you to survive is this too. You might never fail on the scale I did, but some failure in life is inevitable. Is inevitable. It is impossible to live without failing at something. Um, unless you live so cautiously, uh, you might as well not have lived at all, in which case you live by default. We all have to decide for ourselves we all have to decide for ourselves what constitutes failure. But the world is quite eager to give you a set of criteria if you let it. One of the many things I learned at the end of that class I told you that which I ventured at the age of 18 in search of something I could not identify was this, written by the Greek author Plutarch. What we achieve inwardly will change our reality. That is an astonishing statement and yet proven a certain times of every day of our lives. It expresses in part our inescapable connection with the outside world, the fact that we touch other people's lives simply by existing. But how much more are you likely to touch other people's lives? Your intelligence, your capacity for hard work, the education you have earned and received give you unique status and unique responsibilities. If you choose to use your status and the influence to raise your voice on behalf of those who have no voice, if you choose to identify not only with the powerful but with the powerless, if you retain the ability to imagine better, if you retain the ability to imagine better into the lives of those who do not have the advantages, then it will not only be a part of the family who celebrate your existence, but thousands and millions of people whose reality you have have to change. We do not need magic to, to we do not need magic to transform the world. We carry all the power uh, we need ourselves already. We have the power to imagine better. Looking back at the 21 year old that she has become, looking back at the 21 year old that I was at graduation, was a slightly uncomfortable experience for the 42 years old that she has become. How come a lifetime ago? I was striking an uneasy balance. I was, I was, I was striking an uneasy balance between the ambition I had for myself, um, uh, half my lifetime ago. I was striking an uneasy balance between the ambition I had for myself. Um, um, I had for myself, uh, and what those closest to me expected of me. I was convinced that the only thing I wanted to do, ever, was to write novels. However, my parents, both of whom came from impoverished backgrounds and neither of whom had been to college, took the view of my overactive imagination um, was an amusing personal quirk that would pay our mortgage or a secure pension. I know that the irony strikes with the force of a cartoon on view now, so they hoped that I would take a vocational degree um, and I wanted to study English literature. A compromise was reached that we in retrospect set by nobody. Um, and I wanted to study modern languages. Hardly had my parents came around the corner at the end of the road, then I ditched German and the scale of the classic corridor. I cannot remember telling my parents that I was studying classics. They might better have found out for the first time on graduation day. Of all the subjects on this planet, I think they would be hard put to name one less useful than Greek mythology when it came to securing the keys to an executive bathroom. I would like to make it clear in parenthesis that I do not blame my parents for their point of view. There is an expiry date on blaming your parents for steering you in the wrong direction. So why do I talk about the benefits of failure? Failure meant simply because 
failure meant a swooping away of the essential. I stopped pretending to myself that I was anything other than what I was. And I began to direct all my energy into finishing the only work that mattered to me. Had I really succeeded at anything else, I might not even have found the determination to succeed in the one arena where I believed I truly belonged. I was set free because my greatest fear had been realized. And I was still alive. And I still had a daughter whom I adored. And I had an auto typewriter and a big idea. So rock bottom became the solid foundation on which I rebuilt my life. Failure gave me an inner security that I have never, never attained by passing these nations. Failure taught me things about myself that I could have learned no other way. I discovered that I had a strong will and more discipline than I had suspected. Um, and I also found out, uh, and I also then I found out um, that I had uh, friends whose value was truly above the price of rubies. The knowledge that you have emerged wiser and stronger from setbacks means that you are ever after secure in your ability to survive. You will never truly know yourself. Uh, for the elite people won't. Uh, you will never truly know yourself or the strength of your relationships until both have been tested by adversity. Um, I discovered that I had a strong will were more disciplined and more disciplined than I had suspected. Uh, and I also found out that I have uh, friends whose value is truly above the personal rules. The knowledge that you have emerged uh, wiser and uh, stronger from setbacks means that you are ever after secure in your ability to survive. And uh, you will never truly know yourself or the strengths of your relationships for the elite people you want. Um, or the, um, you will never truly know yourself. You will never truly know yourself or the strengths of your relationships until both have been tested by adversity. Such knowledge is a true gift. For all the elite people won, and it has been worth more than any clarification I ever earned. I'm nearly finished. I have one last hope for you, which is something, um, which is something that I already had, that I already had at 21. Uh, the friends with whom I sat on graduation day have been my friends for life. They are my children's ones, go to parents. The people to whom I've been able to turn in terms of real trouble, the people who, uh, the people who kind enough not sue me, when I took their names for Death Eaters, at our graduation, we were bound by enormous affection. By our, uh, we were bound by enormous affection. By, by our shared experience of a time that could never come again, and of course, by the knowledge that we had certain photographic evidence that would be exceptionally valuable if any of us run for prime minister. So today, I wish you nothing better than similar friendships. And tomorrow, I, I wish, even if you remember, I wish even if you remember not a single word of mine, you remember those of Seneca and other of those old Romans in retreats from career ladders uh, in search of ancient wisdom. As is a tale, so is life. Not how long it is, but how good it is, is what matters. I wish you all very good lives. Thank you very much. <laughs>